Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practice Show podcast where I have one goal here. It's to bring you the best practices from the best practices and the best thinking so you guys can improve your practice and improve your life. And so today I talk with a good friend of mine, Shannon Pace Brinker, about one of the most important topics in dentistry right now, which is the shortage of team members, most specifically dental assistants. And we go deep behind the truth and what you need to do as a dentist and also what you might want to consider as a dental assistant for a great future in dentistry. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Now see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. I have one goal here, to make you better, to make your practice better and your life better. And you know your life gets way better and your practice when you have the right people in your practice. Now I've got a great friend of mine on and we're going to talk about one of the most important issues, if not the most important issue in dentistry is the shortage of great team members, specifically dental assistants and the truth about the shortage of dental assistance and what you can do as a dentist so you don't run into this with my good friend, Shannon Pace. Shannon, thanks for being on today. Kirk, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, now you and I have been friends for a long time. I'm just gonna say this about you publicly. You're so brilliant that I have to like, a lot of times I I can't write fast enough when you're talking, so you're gonna have to be patient with me here. And then I go back and I'm like, what did she, oh my gosh, that is so spot on. I got to go back and like learn it based on what you taught me. And I'm like, that is fabulous. Now, if you've never experienced the magic of Shannon Pace, I'm just going to encourage you to do so. But I want people to know who Shannon Pace is. So before we get started, so give us a little bio. Tell us who Shannon Pace is. Well, I've been a dental assistant now for 33 years yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and really have um, have had a lot of mentors along the way. Um, I will say that, you know, I always give credit and learn so much from working uh, with Ross Nash in Charlotte, North Carolina and, and Bob Lowe and uh, and then got to work with John Cranham and the Dawson Academy and uh and now working with Robert Corman, who is a uh, um, basically a COIS uh, you know, doctor, um, and, and just really learning so much, uh, that I possibly can. Um, so I can give that back to other dental assistants. And I've just been blessed to be able to, uh, share everything that I've learned and most importantly, being on the road and training right now, I think we have close to 70,000 dental assistants, um, in my career. And I'm, I'm very proud of that, but, you know, I, I will say that, um, I also learn from them too. And it's such a, uh, a sisterhood, even though I've got a lot of male assistants out there, um, but we are such loyal people, and I'm so excited today to to really talk more about this subject and um, and really just share with you some of the things that we're seeing for dental assistants right now. Yeah, and I want you to go, I want you to because you and I were chatting about the conversation you just had recently, and you said with a group of great assistants, like our time is now. Tell tell them what you told me. Okay. Well, uh, I will say that, you know, right now is probably the best time. There is no time like there is right this moment. Uh, for dental assistants like myself, I'm 53 uh, in a few weeks. And uh, a lot of my friends and colleagues and also trainers um, from ages 45 to 72. And uh, I hope I can still do it at 72. And, you know, we feel like sometimes that we are we, we are not as fast. We, we're not maybe sometimes uh, quick at certain things compared to other younger assistants, but now is our time. And I mean that wholeheartedly because we are finding that, you know, there's such a shortage of assistants, but most importantly, the knowledge that we have now is finally, I think, being respected more than it ever was before. And uh, and I hope that this means that as assistants, we'll basically stay in the practice longer um, than what we are seeing over the last couple of years. So it's an exciting time. It is, it is. And take give us a little history lesson just in the last three years. I mean, 
Basically, you know, I like I shared with you, I have a special place in my heart for dental assistants because they are kind of the unsung heroes back here. We don't really give them, an, they often didn't get enough credit. Uh, and then there was a challenge prior to the pandemic. Tell us your experience prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, and post-pandemic. What, what, how do you see this situation? Well, I, just being really honest, and you know I will always be, is, you know, during the pandemic, we were the loyal ones. You know, I mean, you think about it, I mean, I, my best friend's a hygienist, so I want to throw that out there first. But, you know, the assistants were the ones that were answering the phones that were in the practice still for emergencies and, and really still dedicated to that practice. You know, and um, I think with COVID, a lot of people just decided to stay home. And, and let's be honest. Yes, they wanted to stay home because they were scared, but they also were making more money at home. Nobody will say this, but I'm going to be honest. They were making more money staying home than they were working in the practice. But the loyal assistants, the ones that have been in these practices for a very long time. And I, again, that's one of the things that I will say. Assistants are loyal um, that, you know, we would come in and work. And, and I think sometimes we feel like we're just kind of, you know, getting too old and we're not going to be able to be able to do this. And and now, you know, just seeing the shortage of assistants, because let's face it, you know, doctors sometimes in their mind will feel that they can get someone a lot younger, train them themselves and pay them a lesser fee compared to a seasoned assistant like myself. But let me just share with you, it is not, and I mean this, it is not about the money. It's never about the money. When you are happy and we're loyal people and you treat us right, I will take less money to be treated right, to you know, really become, you know, again, that sounding board for the doctor. And I feel like now, you know, with the loyalty that the older assistants have, now we're so much more valued. And now more than ever, I mean, the opportunities are just endless now for what we can do in the practice. And a lot of times all we want is just recognition. Yeah. You know, recognition that, hey, oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for staying with me. And listen, we'll stay with you until you retire if you treat us right. You know, and that's one of the things that is so valuable. And you don't want to let you got a good assistant. You better not let him go right now, because listen, there are dentists that are calling me every week, sometimes twice a week, looking for an assistant, you know, a really good assistant and trying to steal them from other practices. And that's really what's happening right now. This shortage of assistance is almost, to, I feel, in an emergency state. Yeah. And you're speaking my jam right now. And according to, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm citing other sources, but we got a, we have a great dentist in our to the top study club and he was here last time and he's in the state of Massachusetts. And he said, Kirk, it's so bad out there right now that the state of Massachusetts did a study and they found that there was about one EFTA for every one dentist, you know, and that's, those are times we haven't seen before. And are you, you hearing kind of the same thing or not? Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, because part of it, honestly, is the feeling of assistance where they feel that if they have that license, if they are certified, it means absolutely nothing to differentiate them from another assistant in the practice that isn't. And so they're not keeping their certifications. And I said, listen, the certification wasn't for the doctor. It was for me. It was for you. You're taking this to better yourself and to show that you have earned the right to do these procedures. But they're like, Shannon, if there's no value there and I'm not getting paid any different to have the certification, why would I pay my three hundred dollars you know, to keep it? And I, I, I do understand part of that, but I think we have to really, again, build the value of this is where this assistant is and what they've earned the right to do these procedures. And it has to be recognized by the doctor. It has to be recognized because why would I continue to do it? Why would I continue to learn and to grow? Um, if, if it's not even recognized and that's, yeah. that's the most important thing that I think for your doctors need to hear this is recognize the assistance and almost tell them, listen, I'm going to invest in you. If you invest in the assistant, they'll stay with you. We're loyal people. And, and that, listen, my team of trainers that I can't tell you how many of my trainers were not certified. I personally paid for it. I said, you know what? You can't work for me if you're not certified because yeah. that to me is a status and, I wanted those credentials for them. And, and I think this is where it's not valued anymore. These doctors have got to get these team members certified. So we have earned the right and make them earn it. But we'll stay with you forever because you invested in us. And I think that's really the secret. 
Yeah, I want you to go back to that because you're speaking my jam too on this. Now, let's assume, and now again, we've got a lot of dental students and younger dentists, but let's say, let's, I mean, most of you, if you've been going down the path of becoming a better dentist, you know how important this partnership is back there. But let's say to a younger dentist, like let's really illustrate the value of a great assistant. What can a, you know, I don't know if I want to send all these people for training, Shannon, you don't understand. What's the value of a really great assistant to a restorative dentist from your perspective? Well, I would say- if you don't have the money and listen, I've had dentists that will send all their assistants and I've had doctors that would send one or two. If you don't have the money, send one and really invest in that one. But the expectation, the problem sometimes I think in dentistry is we'll send a team member to go and take these courses. And when they come back, did you ask me what I learned? Did you really say and make me accountable for what I learned? And and I have a really good friend um, in Atlanta. His name's Philip Talley. And I love this guy because he really, he should be on your team, Kirk. I'm going to tell you, love this guy. He is systematic because he's military, but he comes back and he sends his team to different courses. When they come back, they got to sit down and you want to tell me what you learned and then you're going to train the rest of the team. He makes them accountable, but he invests in them and he he, he pays them well. And he says, Shannon, I, I treat them the best I would treat any of my family. And I love that. And But if you don't have the money, send one. But the expectation would be for that one to help train the others. And, and I get that. But I will tell you that I think different people need different roles. And I would not want to send one team member to do one thing because what you can do is just kind of exactly what I was saying with Dr. Talley. He'll have one that'll go take maybe some Invisalign courses, one that'll go take some restorative courses, one that'll maybe go take more hygiene courses. And they come back to the office and they help train each other um, to really hold them accountable for what they learn. I'm investing in you, but what are you going to give back to me? Right. Yeah. And, and he gets it because he said, Shannon, if I invest in them, I know that they'll stay with me because they know that I do care and I want them to know as much or more than I do. And I was like, man, why can't I live in Atlanta? You know, I mean, honestly, I I love his thought process, but most importantly, he's spot on. Um, We are loyal people, but we need that investment in us. And I will stay with you because I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, when you when you invest in an assistant for courses, you're saying, listen, I want you to know exactly what I know. But most importantly, I need a sounding board. You know, I need somebody that I can bounce things off of because a treatment plan doesn't just come from the doctor. It's sometimes we see things a little bit different and just let us voice our opinion with you and we'll do the best dentistry we possibly can together. That's 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 really the common denominator is just, you know, working together, but give them the chance to have the same knowledge as you do, because we're going to do better dentistry together. It's it's a proven fact. Yeah, you're such a gift to dentistry. This is so awesome because, and I love your thought process of even if you're on a limited budget, diversify the training. I think it was you, I'm pretty sure it was you, like you and I were having a conversation like five years ago and I was telling you about all these dentists buying CEREC machines. And you said to me, like, point blank, like, if you're going to buy a CEREC machine, pay for the course first. And I go, what do you mean? Like, send your dental assistants out to learn how to use it. And I was like, that's brilliant because now you're ensuring that you're actually going to use the technology and actually they're going to pull you into the process when only they need you. And most of them will say, get away from this. Um, and then like, there's so many things I've learned from you over the years. Let's even break down some of these processes. Like this is my favorite is like every dentist goes to a course and they get this beautiful camera and I go, give me the camera. And they go, no. And like the biggest change in their life happens is when they give the camera to who and what happens. Can you describe that transformation? Absolutely. And, and, and Kirk, let's talk about the product itself too. Let's be honest. Um, I will say that I've got a Canon's, I've got uh, four Canon's and a Nikon, and I've got like 10 Shofu cameras. And the issue in my own practice was we have two Canon's and we have a Nikon and nobody wants to touch it. And so it's almost like a foo pot. You, you can either <laughs> go take courses, train me how to use the Canon, but sometimes we know it. I hate to use the word jack up. We're going to jack up the jack up all the settings. And you didn't make it easy for me. So it's great to spend the money for a Canon and Nikon because I'm a photography snob and you know that. But I will tell you that, you know, if they're not using it, then let's get something that everybody will use um, to make their life easier because there's a reason why they're not using it. So there's truly twofold. The thing with the Canon and I think or with the camera um, and all the technology that we have is we are the lost leader in this. You know, and I say this to Invisalign all the time. I have taught got 30,000 people in Invisalign. I am the trainer for the team. And my team is the trainers for all the Invisalign courses. And I got to tell you, um, they still don't get it. And I told them this, so it's no secret. 
they still think that they have to go to the hygienist and get the hygienist. Great. The hygienist has to bring up the treatment. Let's let's be honest. If I'm a hygienist, I don't have any treatment in my chair. But we're the one doing the scanning. And when they get that, then they'll 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 get it. No manufacturer really sees that we are the ones that's doing the work. Yeah. And on Friday, I was at Serona, did supply Serona all day uh, with all the guys from Spear, you know, and Samir was there. And there's uh, I mean, so many people. Uh Gary DeWood was there. There's so many great great people. I'm like, how did I get into this room? You know, they're all dentists. I'm the only assistant. And, uh, and one of the things that Samir said was now, you know, out of the gate, we're not the ones that's going to be using this new printer. It's the assistant. And then the next speaker got up and he says, I don't do this. I just told my assistant, she better learn how to do it because she's going to be making these models and doing all the printing. And I was like, I'm just, you should see me. I was videotaping this. I'm like, you are my hero. You know, and yeah. I just gave him a hug before I left. I said, I'm going to tell you something. You get it. You are a good dentist. And so if we you know, want all of this technology, it's great to have it, but somebody's got to own it and somebody's got to utilize it. And this is where, boy, you, you, you tell me, listen, Shannon, I want you to be my invisible leader. I want you to take my photos just because you said that I am going to take it so serious. I'm going to 100% own it, but most importantly, I'm going to be excited about it and I'm going to make sure you use it. It's not going to sit and collect dust. And I think this is where we fall short in dentistry is assigning people these roles. Maybe to maybe you've got two assistants, sign one to do um, maybe the CAD cam if you've got a circuit machine and assign the other one to be doing the Invisalign or doing all the scanning. Um, this is where you really make me feel important. And that's yeah. sometimes where we, we always say we don't have titles. But let me tell you right now in dentistry, the assistants need titles. You know, we need to feel like we are important to the practice. And, and honestly, that's the way to do it. And getting us the training with the camera, it is the most important thing that the doctor could do right now because we are the ones that have more time to take the photos. So you get that. Yeah, you guys can see why I love just hanging out with Shannon. She makes me smarter by the minute, and I love this. And you better copyright that term. That's brilliant. Invisa leader. Like, this won't air for three or four weeks. So that is brilliant. Well, that's right already. Um, we do have an Invisa leader shirt. It says, you know, I'm the Invisa leader, and, yeah. um, and uh, becoming the Invisa leader, I have a course for that. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, it is so important because, again, when manufacturers, you know, they 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 understand that the, it takes the doctor and the hygienist to really work together to to utilize a lot of the equipment. But at the end of the day, I am just as valuable and I'm the one that gets the yes. And in my practice, I'm the one that sees the patient first with the doctor. And so it just depends on the type of practice. But giving us those things, you know, the whitening specialist, which we did our you know podcast a couple of years ago on that, giving us some type of title, but let me know that you're responsible for that. I, I'm going to take that and I'm going to be like, man, he really does trust me. He really does care about me. And yeah. it can go so far. Go back to that too, because um, sometimes dentists get caught in, they get in their own way and they go, you know that I'm just going to give my assistants more to do. That is not the truth. When you trust somebody to become the Invisa leader, to handle the printing and the scanning, to, um, to do those things, like you're changing their lives. You're not just giving them more to do, right? Absolutely not. And let me just tell you that you, you are so making me a lot of times, you know, we come from, you know, a, you know, maybe we have low self-worth because let's face it, when we look at the pyramid of where assistants usually are, and this is not woes me at all. This is just it's just a fact. I'm not saying anything that nobody really doesn't know. It's true. Uh, we're at the bottom but we're valuable. When something breaks, who do they call? They call us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when we need to have something repaired, who do they call? They call us when something's not working. Um, and so these are the things that, you know, the equipment and doing the infection control and, you know, and, and again, thinking about the scanning, thinking about the CAD cam, and then where are we going with printing? We're printing models. We're doing a lot of this work. And this is where, again, it only takes so little so little for loyalty and that's that's all we need but giving us a title and really giving us that elevation um when it's our time in the practice to have that i think just goes so far you know yeah. it's not about the money and i've talked to assistants you know i've interviewed them it's not about the money it's how we're treated and valued that value means everything i'll yeah. take four dollars less an hour to feel value well and and you shouldn't like you absolutely shouldn't and this is just a beautiful uh, mindset that you have to have as a dentist to be wildly successful. And again, I'm going to introduce another roadblock and I want you to help us through this because I hear this all the time. 
you know, you've been saying this for a long time, like your assistant could do this way better. And you can see the dentist go, yeah, you don't, you're not in my practice. And so some dentists think, well, my team isn't smart enough to do this. And that is not true. So what happens inside of a dentist's brain when they start telling themselves, my team is not smart enough to take photos, to scan, like, how do you help them through that challenge? Cause that is a, that's a, that's stinking thinking, you know? It is. And, and, and can I tell you that, um, you know, believing in someone and, and, and I will tell you that that's one of the things that I would say about my team. Um, I, at one time before COVID had 81 trainers that worked for me across the U S and Canada. And, you know, some of them are so, um, all, all of them are better than me. All of them are smarter than me. And they would always say, well, I'll never be like you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You are amazing. I could never do some of the things that you're doing. It's all about how you feel and what you think. And you can do this. You're not the same person that you were. You're a different dental assistant. And that's all it took. And now, Kurt, do you know 17 of my employees now work for major manufacturers? They are wow. directors of education. Uh, uh, nine of them work for a line. They're now iTero you know, specialists and they go in and do integration for iTero. Um, you know, I've got ones that are in charge of manufacturers. They're pride product managers. Um, I mean, er, that's a lot to say about that. And do you think that I trained them to do that? No, all I did was say, you're not the same person. You can do this. You know, I believe in you. And and, and I'm going to tell you, don't let anybody tell you different. And and a lot of times, I think with assistants, a lot of us have been so beat up and we're, we work so hard. And listen, we work two or three jobs. I mean, what, what really makes me sad is when I hear assistants have to have side gigs in order to make ends meet, where they're like, I got a side hustle. I hear this all the time, a side hustle. And I remember, I hate to say it's so stupid, but I was like, what's a side hustle? You know, and they're like, oh, I work for Uber Eats or I'll drive a car for Uber or I go to Target and work at night and these types of things. And I'm like, why are these people having to work at night? Because yeah. they can't make it. And so it's like, doctor, one dollar extra an hour is a million to us a million you know and and i think that this is where we have to think about titles and again when i say you know it's not about the money it's not but give them what they're worth and if you feel like they're not where they need to be then give them the education and and if you're scared well if i pay for the education they're going to leave me and go somewhere else then do this just say listen i'm going to invest in you because i know that you can do these things and you know that I can't do it all myself, but I want you to do it because I really feel that you can really do this. Yeah. And yes. I'm going to do this, but here are the things. And there's a lot of practices where the doctors will say, I'll, I'll pay for this for you. And I want you to do these things if you want to do it, but you got to be invested. But I also know that some practices actually have assistants sign something to where they're, they're, you know, they can't just up and leave. And if they do, they have to, you know, pay them back for certain things, especially if it's a very high level course that they're going to like EFTA, if you're going to send me to EFTA school, you know, it's three grand plus. Um, and, uh, but they're like, Hey Shannon, how do I do that? And I'm like, listen, well then there's nothing wrong with saying I'm going to invest in you and I'm more than happy to do this. Um, but here's the stipulations and here's the things that we want to do too. You always can find a way to work around that. And the other thing is, I think exactly what you said is find out what they do best. This was one of the things that I knew is not everybody on my team could teach Invisalign, whether they said, oh, we do a lot of Invisalign. Well, what's a lot? Mm -hmm. Oh, that three, four a month. That is not a lot. You cannot be a trainer for that. Let's find out what else you do best, right? It's a it's, I, and I, Kirk, I got to tell you something. I got that from you. Well, what's the number? That's How many funny. do you do? Don't tell me you do a lot. What's the number, right? And yeah. I never really asked that. And uh, and I said, what's, how many are you doing? But they might be great with laboratory work, um, you know, uh, making provisionals. Everybody has a gift. Mm -hmm. The doctor has to find that gift and find out what this person does best. The other thing is, is asking them, what do you not like to do? Because if you said, Shannon, what do you not like to do? I'd be like, root canals. I'd rather donate a body part than to do a root canal. And I mean that. And I had seniority in my practice. I'm like, uh, I see this patient on the schedule at root canal. Oh, Shannon ain't doing that. <laughs> oh, Shannon ain't doing that. You know, yeah. it's not. I, I hate it, you know, and, and, but I've got a team in my practice that lives for root canal. I'm like, what's wrong with you? You know, but she loves it. But I was like, you know what, this is what we have to do in dentistry. We have to find what they love and what they do best. And then putting the right people in those places um, is not hard to do. And sometimes we think this one person doesn't have the gifts. We got to let them run with something. And, and I'll tell you, I, I will, and even if I didn't have the special gifts to do that procedure, I'm going to learn it. Right. Because I'll tell you, that's why I was in Esperanto on Friday. I was taking a course to learn how to do printing. I wanted to know how to do it. And that's why I was there. Yeah. And, um, and, and I will tell you, I think that will go a long, long way.
Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. You're speaking, again, you're speaking my jam, the whole, you know, find out what people are good at. And when you get right people, right seats, it has a compounding magic and output. Like things happen that you never even thought would happen. You're like, wow, how did that happen? Well, people are doing what they love and they're really good at it. And so um, there's so many questions I have on this too. So, cause I do get these roadblocks and I've watched you do the photography thing and you're going to do it again here for us in another workshop. So if I'm a young dentist, like, and I, I know I'm kind of picking on photography, because it, it becomes a starting point, you know, is, um, and especially the Shofu cameras, all that kind of stuff. Some dentists think, well, it would be so hard to train them. And then it's going to take them 30 minutes to get all these photos together. That is not true. I've watched you do it. So give me some perspective. If I'm a young dentist and I'm going to embrace this path of really investing in my people, how fast can they do this? How much better oh, they, can they do it? How much more consistent can they do it? Well, the first thing is you got to make sure you got everything you need. I mean, let's just be honest. You got to have, you know, good retractors, not crappy retractors, because I'm the first person that will call somebody out in a minute. Uh, you know, I, I have a column in DPR and I, I cringe sometimes when I see these cases that have been um, print, you know, they'll be in print. I'm looking at these photos and I'm like, oh my God, great case, crappy retractors. My eye cannot, it didn't even go to the beautiful work these doctors will do. And I'll call them on it. You know, I'm like, listen, the one thing I will tell you is, You've got, be you're a beautiful dentist, beautiful work, great, great job. But, oh my God, my eye, I can't even focus on your great dentistry because these crappy retractors that are just blue and cracked and nasty. Um, so we really got to look at that. If you're going to do it right, you have to have good, um, you know, good retractors, nice mirror, not some scratched up, you know, mirror. And then teaching them the right settings, teach them how to hold the camera and spending time taking the photographs. The other thing is, is, you can teach me how to take the photos, but if you never critique me, and I will tell you, when I worked with Ross Nash, I wanted to kill him. I told him, I said, I wanted to quit. He made me retake it over and over and over and over. And I did not appreciate that at the time because Kirk, when we would, he would write articles. I mean, he's written, God, thousands of articles. And when we were working on a patient, one assistant would take the step by step as he's doing all these steps and the other one would assist and, oh my God, retake it, retake it, retake it. And I would leave it and be like, oh my God, we must have took 500 photos. I'm so grateful for that now because I never really realized what is a bad photo and what is a good photo. And you know, like anybody, patients are sizing us up. And if I am now skipping corners and taking crappy photos, I might as well not have taken any. And, and that's the one thing that I see the most. And is if you're going to teach me how to take photos, we're going to download them, we're going to print them, and we're going to critique them. And then you're going to go back and retake them. Because if you don't do that, then you might as well not have done any training, right? And this is one of the things I think I see in dentistry is we just kind of tell them, but we or we'll tell them to take the photos or you know take the impressions, but we never tell the assistant what they do wrong. And I think sometimes it's almost like telling the patient, you know, that you know why, what are, what are they, what's the compromise if you don't do this? What's going to happen? We feel like we're going to hurt somebody's feelings, but what I want the doctors to understand is you're making me better. I might not like you making me retake that impression seven times. But you got to tell me what I did wrong, because if you tell me what I did wrong, I'm not going to keep doing that or at least try not to anyway. And I think this is where if you're going to train us, let us take photos on each other and then sit down and let's talk about what you see and what could I have done better. But why did why is that bad? You know, maybe my chair was up too high or too low or I didn't have good retractors or I got more of the nose in the frame. You know, being picky is one thing, but educating me on what you don't like as the doctor is going to make me a better assistant. And I'm going to have more respect for you because you're taking the time to say, this is not what I want. I want this and this and this. And some people don't get that. And so you really have to write it out for us and tell us this is what I want and this is how you're going to get it. But practicing and so many people have these, you know, these monthly meetings and it's only about money and numbers and where we are for the month. What if we reverse that and maybe had one for that, but then one on a clinical procedure a month or take five minutes in the huddle of one thing that's clinical tip, one clinical tip. And I got this. I stole this from one of my trainers every morning when he has a huddle. He does one clinical tip that's really quick and he assigns different team members to do that. It could be a hygienist, it could be assistant um, that's doing this. So we all learn. And I will tell you, I think it's brilliant. You know, I think it's brilliant. So in investing in the clinical tip. Um, is something that we all need to know, no matter what it is, right? And uh, and I love that. But spending a little bit more time, I think, with the clinical training, just taking one subject, one thing, um, is going to really, I think, make us all better. And Absol that would be my suggestion. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I'm also going to – I have so many more questions. Do you have a few more minutes? <laughs> just, I'm 
woods. I got all the time in the world. All right, cool, 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 cool. So, okay, I'm totally, I'm totally following you, Shannon. I love this. But my area, I can't find assistance. I mean, you hear this too. Like, where do I start? Do you have any good, I mean, I know nobody has a magic, you know, magic ticket for this. But what, what do you tell people when they say, I can't find assistance. I can't get anybody to apply for them. What are your thoughts? Well, I think thinking about your ad is the most important thing you can do. Don't, don't put the same ad together as everybody else. What makes you different? And I think it goes back to what are you going to allow me to do? What do you got in your practice that is value to me? Because when I see digital photography, and, and I will say this, I was interviewing for an assistant here locally, and um, and you know you're never a hero in your own town, right? I mean you're not. And and the one thing I will say is there's a lot of assistants, especially younger ones, that don't know who I am. And these set we had seven or eight assistants coming into our practice to interview, and one of them brought in their photos, and I said. Who told you? I mean, because that was something I was like, who told you? And she said, nobody told me. She said, I just wanted to show you what I could do and, wow. and what I feel I'm the best at. And I was like, all these other assistants had so many more qualities and credentials, but she was the one I hired, you know? And I feel like if we're talking about elevation of assistance, putting something different in your ad as to what it is that you're looking for. I'm looking for a partner. I'm looking for someone that wants to be by my side and us look at patients together, you know, same set of eyes, helping me to do better dentistry. That would be my suggestion. Because if I saw that, mm -hmm. I would be like, oh man, this is somebody I want to work for because they're already showing that they value an assistant because this is something you, I don't see this anywhere, you know? And I would say, you know, looking at your ad, if you're placing an ad, man, ha think about what you would want to hear from a dental assistant and the quality and mentioning all the technology that you have in this day and age. Don't just tell me, oh, I'm looking for somebody It's 40 hours a week and we're going to do this and this and this and this. And we've got this, even the benefits. Honestly, nobody really cares. Tell me what you've invested into your practice. Tell me the technology that you have and to think about the type of industry that you do. And most importantly, what is going to be my role for you? I think that's when you write that kind of ad you'll have more people applying for your job than uh, than you probably could ever imagine or the right people, maybe not all of you, the right people. I take that back, the right person um, and who's qualified to work with you. And I think that's where it starts. You know, it's hard. And then looking in like the schools, there's so many schools right now, um, not enough of them, but a lot of them. And I would definitely call out to the schools, especially for interns. Sometimes you never know. You might have a diamond in the rough and volunteer to be the person that lets these assistants come and intern in your practice. Because then guess what? You get almost like the pick of the litter. I hate to use that, but it's true. When you have them coming in, you'd be like, man, this person's not that great, but this girl right here, she's a quick learner. And she might be the person that does the scanning. She might be the person that takes great photography. You never know. And so I would say, open your practice up for those interns that need uh, the time in your practice. And then you really can see, and that might be a way to go too. So. But yeah. the, I, the ad is, is the secret sauce. I Have love that. I love that. Now go back to this because I love, I love taking this apart and I love how you've presented both sides of this in the photo, the pieces of photography for that one assistant. So we've been talking about the vantage point of a dentist, you know, how to search. But if I'm a dental assistant listening, you know, I think you would agree with this statement, Shannon, like the more that you invest in yourself, you're going to find people are going to come find you. So if I'm a dental assistant, Give me some pieces of advice. Give me some advice for a great career in dentistry. What would you tell me? I would say you have to invest in yourself. You know, the mindset right now of assistance is I, why should I pay for my own education? You know, it's, it's not my name on the door and it's not my business. Um, I don't own it. Well, can I tell you something? Don't ever say that you don't own it. Don't ever say that you can't do things. I have my own practice now. I have my own, you know, it's not a dental office, but I have my own shop. I have my own business, you know, and, and sky is the limit, I think, for team members. They don't understand that they can do everything that they want to if the mind is right. And I am not going to wait on a doctor to pay for my education. I am going to better myself. There's things that I still don't know. I don't know a lot about oral surgery and I want to learn more. Uh, I didn't know a lot about printing. I wanted to learn more. Um, you know, I went out to Spear and took the, um, you know, the treatment planning course, because I wanted to learn more about treatment planning. Um, I wanted to learn more about occlusion. And those courses, as you know, were not cheap. But guess what? I wanted to invest in myself. Even though I take all these Dawson courses, I wanted to see what are they doing? You know, and what else can I learn? 
I take dentist courses because I wanted to learn how to place composite. And listen, I'm not even an EFTA and I wanted to know how to place composite, you know, and I teach, you know, bonding techniques, but I wanted to learn from different people. Investing in yourself, you're, you, you can't have that mindset. You know, you have to say, you know what, I earned the right to have this certification. I'm going to keep this certification. You don't need somebody to pay your way pay your own way. That's the problem right now. I think with a lot of this generation coming up is they want everybody to pay their way, pay your own way, earn the money yourself and invest in yourself. Because listen, I, I had a lot of great mentors, but I paid my dues, you know, and, and I will tell you that, you know, investing in yourself, nobody can take that away. Mm -hmm. And that's when you change that mindset. You can be anything you want to be anything you want to be. And I think that's where it starts is, you know, they, they whine about making, you know, minimum wage. Well, what are you doing different? Right. And they don't like me when I say that, but I'm like, well, what are you doing different? Why does the doctor have to pay for you to go and learn how to do these things? You should be paying for it yourself, mm -hmm. you know, invest in you because nobody can take that away. And you do, they, they're there for your not, you're there to, to learn, but you know, you want to better yourself. And that's the same thing I've told my kids, you pay your own way and earn your own way and you'll earn that respect. And I think this is where we also have to think about, and I'll call them out in a minute. I mean that it's not just, you know, hounding the doctor. We had a, I, I told the assistants just Friday before last, when I was up in Ohio, I said, listen, you don't need to wait on somebody. You know, your mind is everything. You've got to come in with a great mindset as to I'm here to work. I'm going to bust my tail and I'm going to learn and make myself better. And I think at the end of the day, those are the people that you know give dentistry a bad rap you've got to have a better mindset to say you know what i'm invested too and i want to be a part of this team because when you find a good dentist you don't want to let them go um because uh you know that's something that i think goes both ways here and that's one of the things that you know i, I feel like is a you know is something that we have to work better together as a team doctor and assistant um depending on each other and relying on each other is so important and when you rely on me and ask me my opinion that's the person I want to work for because they have value in me. That that's something that, you know, you can't take away. Yeah, you can't you, put money on that. You are amazing. I am totally picking up what you're putting down. Cause I totally agree. Now, uh, um, you know, I know you've been, I'm, I'm just going to tell you guys like Shannon is an incredible teacher. So I'm kind of leading you with this question, but I'm also pointing these people in the right direction. So Shannon, I totally get it. I've got the right assistant. I don't even know how to train it myself. Like, where do I go? Like, this is a lot of, I'm too busy doing dentistry sometimes. I would like to do what, you have some great resources for this. How do I train my assistants? That's my big question. Well, Kirk, you know, we built this education online. Uh, it's chairsideassisting.com. And, um, and I will tell you that there are a lot of learning modules on there, but one of the things that we did was we did not want a dental assistant to have an excuse to not pay for their own education, because that's one of the things that I didn't want the doctor to feel like we were going to the doctor to get the doctor to pay for everything because they're already, you know, they're already in debt. Let's be honest. They've already got all this equipment and they're, they're paying for the technology. And, 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 and again, all of us, you know, have, have reasons for things, but I wanted the assistant to be able to stand up because you got to walk the walk. You know, if I'm telling them they've got to invest in themselves, I got to make sure they can pay for it. And so, what we did is we built this platform of education where they can, it's a monthly subscription. They can take as many courses as they want. They can stop at any time. There is no contract. Um, and, and they can do whatever they need to be able to better themselves. And just uh, about six months ago, we finally got uh, the trademark CE in a box because I said, sometimes these modules, especially like the provisional module that we have, which is probably the most popular one, it's seven hours and they can go in and out and stop at any given time. But seven hours without something to do with our hands is tough, you know, because we're telling them we want you to watch these things, we want you to learn. So we put together the CE in a box. And what that is, is basically a model with all the materials, all the burrs, everything though needs to stay in that box, Doc. Don't let them tear this box apart because what happens is, is they've got this box. Um, I wanted them to be able to replace the teeth. I wanted them, almost like they're coming to one of our courses, right? But the box and the model stays in the practice. So as they're watching, these modules or they maybe watch the module and they want to practice they've got something to always practice on and right now we have four different uh ce in a box but the beauty is is that we're not trying to break the bank matter of fact i think we don't even make but like 10 bucks off of these because we got to find a way to continue that education and this is where i think we fall short is what if i leave you train me now what am i going to train the next person and we think about going and giving courses, but we don't think what's the leave behind? What did we leave them with to continue the education? And I feel like this is really the sweet spot. And when we're doing these courses, I was like, wow, what are the practices going to use? Because they don't have any models. 
So I've been working with Viad, a, a model company out in California. And I just said, hey, we got to find a way to, for them to be able to have the models, have all the equipment. And so we have one for rubber dam right now. We've got one for provisional. So all they do is once the teeth aren't looking bad, they just replace the teeth, you know, and it's the same like we did in dental school. But now we've got these boxes and remember, keep everything in the box if you do buy that. Uh, we've got a rubber dam, uh, cord packing, anything that we really need help with. And at any given time, whenever the assistant maybe doesn't have a patient or the doctor says, hey, listen, this week I want you to allocate 15 minutes to practicing those provisionals. You know, I feel like this is what we've been missing. This is what we did not have before. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I can't believe I didn't think about this before because we know everybody now wants things so quickly and so fast but we're tactile learners and we don't have something to work on. How am I going to have it, you know, go from here to here. Right. And we think that's the answer. We know that's the answer, not think that's the answer. And so I think that's what now we can offer doctors, not just these courses, but now giving them um, a way to work with their hands. And we're really proud of that, you know, and, and something that, again, they can do over and over and over uh, without having to invest all over again. You've got the box and the bottles and they just stay in, in that one kit, which is, so great. I wish somebody would have done that for me a long time ago. I probably would know more than I know now. Yeah. So, Amen, sister. Now I'm going to put this in the show notes, but where do I go if I'm a listener? Tell us where to find that. How do we get it? Super easy. Um, it's chairsideassisting.com. Chairsideassisting.com. Um, our monthly subscription is 29 bucks. $29. And they can take, if they, if they get in there and they want to take all, I think we have 180 modules. If they want to take all 180 and they they're done in 30 days, so be it then cancel it. You know, um, right now we have about 5,000 subscribers and, uh, and uh, I will tell you, Kirk, 25% are dentists. Wow. So, you know, because as assistants, we tell people different things. We show different things, um, especially younger dentists, you know, and it's amazing sometimes what comes out of this mouth. Um, but I'm proud of that. And I think that that's something again, $29 a month for your team to take a module, but make sure they do it. I mean, make sure they do it. If you're going to pay for it, what did you learn? Show me what you learned, you know? And, and I think that's when we need to do the follow-up because in dentistry, we get so busy and we forget that. So they're going to invest it, but it's chairsideassisting.com. And again, we've got four right now, CE in a box um, setups for models and different courses. And then hopefully we're going to be adding to that. But right now um, I just appreciate letting me talk about it because again, it's something that we don't have for assistance right now. So um, again, it's great. And so just chairsideassisting.com and you can go in there and if you have any questions or any, um, anything that maybe you didn't get answered, you can always reach out to me and uh, I'd love to help you, you know, make a good decision for your practice on that. Yeah. And Shannon, that's brilliant. I mean, you're such a great gift to dentistry and it's crazy, uh, reasonable investment to make your people better. So check it out. Make sure you check it out. So any last thoughts you have on this? And I'm going to have you back again and again and again, cover other topics, but any last thoughts on the truth behind the shortage of dental assistants? You know, I, I think if you, if you have a good assistant, no matter what age they are, you know, we're, we're not, a lot of times uh, uh, my friends, and I'm really sad for this, they're retiring because they feel they're not worthy, you know, and, and it almost brings tears to my eyes, you know, because, they are so, I have one right now that worked for me in Charlotte, you know, and she's, she could retire right now this year. And I said, Ava, don't do that. Don't retire. You have such a gift. It's, it makes me sad, you know? And she says, yeah, but I'm not, I feel like I'm not really valued. And you know, who, who wants to really, you know, have me at their side. And I'm like me. And that's one thing I will say is if you just thank your assistant, that goes so far, take them to lunch, spend time with them, tell them and give them a chance to value or, or voice, not value, but voice their opinion on something. You know, hey, what do you think? Sometimes that what do you think means everything, you know, and that's one thing I will say is, you know, hug them. If you're not, if you're not touchy, huggy, feely, you know, thank them, um, you know, a little just thank you, even some chocolate bar, something to say, hey, thank you so much. And. Um, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. I haven't said that in a very long time. It goes a long, long way. And um, and you want to keep them right now because that's one of the things is we want to keep our dental assistants. We're right now in Virginia Beach. Uh, I was telling Kirk earlier that we have a shortage. It's, uh, I counted the other day, it was like 32. And, uh, and it's just in Virginia Beach, a shortage, 32 openings for assistants right now. And I'll tell you, they're offering like saddle bonuses. And it's like crazy. And I'm not making this stuff up. And it's like, oh my God, this is ridiculous, but it is our time. But I would tell you, if you got a good assistant, value them and appreciate them um, because it's, it's really, really hard to find right now. And um, I just appreciate you letting me talk, talk about assistance. Cause again, a lot of times it's not brought up and I just thank you, Kirk, for, for seeing the value of assistance the way you do, because that's something that we just don't see. Hey, it's my pleasure. I've, I, uh, I'm not nearly as smart as you, or I'm a fraction of 
of your I intelligence, like <laughs> but you've also done that for me in so many of the trainings that we've been together. I mean, my first experience with you, you had just come into John Cranham's office and I was watching you in some of these courses and I'm like, man, she is brilliant just on the verbal communication, how you think about systems, how you think in general is such a gift to dentistry. So I'm so glad to call you my friend. And like I said, I'm going to have you back again and again and again. And I'm going to encourage you guys, if you're listening, if you're listening on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, doesn't matter, flip up to the notes. You're going to see all the links to what Shannon had mentioned. You can click on them and check them out right there. And I promise you it will be a an awesome, awesome investment uh, with a great return for your people. So Shannon, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I love that you're doing this show. It's such a need and uh, you do such a great job. And I love all the all the different people that you have on, amazing variety. And uh, and again, thank you so much for letting a dental assistant, uh, you know, lift up other dental assistants. It means a lot to me. So I really do appreciate that. Hey, it's my pleasure. The fun part of this job is I don't even have to know anything. I just have smart friends. <laughs> That's me. I have- people and I can be like them, right? Absolutely. By osmosis, that's my word. Osmosis, I'm going to pick up on some of this stuff. So, and I hope that's the same case for you guys listening. So stick around. We say goodbye to everybody else. Shannon. But thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show. If you enjoyed today, just do us a favor, hit the share button. And I hope by osmosis, I like how I use that word, you're picking up on some of the stuff that Shannon's putting down because it truly is the secret to having a great practice with the right people and investing in these great people that make make the practice better. um, And it's just life changing. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in until we see you next time. Keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. 